Hi, this is James Barris. I hope you find this talk supports you in your practice. If you'd like to support my teaching, you can use the donate button underneath my picture on Dharma Seed to do that. Your support is greatly appreciated. Well, we're coming into the home stretch of the uh, Theravadan masters and practices. Um, been doing, going through the uh, all of these masters that are written up in Living Dharma. Uh, actually, I see you have a copy of it. Why don't you hold that up? This is my an old copy, which is Living Buddhist Masters, and he has a more recent copy, Living Dharma, uh, where all of these teachers and practices can be found. And uh, tonight, I want us to experiment a little bit with um, Ajahn Damodaro's practices, two practices particularly, uh, and talk a little bit about him. Ajahn Damodaro, here's a, a picture of him, which I'll, you can, you can't really see except if you're close up front, but uh, he was um, a really wonderful teacher, uh, I've been told, particularly by um, a friend and colleague, Christopher Titmus, who Maybe some of you know. Anybody uh, ever sat with Christopher Titmus? Okay. So uh, Ajahn Damodaro was Christopher's main teacher, um, and he extolled, sung his praises uh, very much. And uh, I, I downloaded uh, something about Christopher's, uh, when Christopher wrote a, an obituary for. Uh, for Ajahn Damodaro, who died in 2005 at the age of 92. And he was actually, hmm, like Ajahn Chah, he was in a coma for two years. Ajahn Chah was in a coma for, for longer than that, or, but he was in a coma for two years. Died at 92. Um, this is just something that uh, Christopher says about him. Ajahn Damodaro, Damodaro never cared about books formal religion or orthodoxy. He was a true warrior for practice, practice, practice. He banned the reading of books, and at least, I guess, in maybe while people were practicing. I don't think he, you know, he didn't say never read, but um, just like in Spirlock, you're, you know, you're not encouraged to do a whole lot of reading while you're practicing. Uh, he didn't actually, okay, this is interesting. He didn't approve of me writing books. This is Christopher talking about. We practiced outdoors, either on the porch of our huts or on the sandy floor among the trees of the six-acre monastery with around 70 to 100 monks and similar number of nuns. And then he says, so he could keep an eye on us. <laughs> yeah. Supposedly someone of unflagging energy. Um, and here's a little bit where in, the, uh, in Jack's book, Living Buddhist Masters, where he he talks about, give a little background, um, man of enormous energy and self-confidence who studied several meditation techniques and felt them inadequate. He found a temple where they offered him a room to continue his study of meditation on his own. For many months, he remained alone in this room until he had discovered for himself a route to the heart of the Buddha's teachings. On coming out of this room, he traveled in South Thailand and eventually began teaching insight meditation uh, around the country. He was a family man, two wives, they say, who ordained later in his life. Um, so this is, again, pointing out that there's many ways to practice in many of these uh, masters develop their own styles of practice, all of them having the common denominator of waking up through investigating reality, seeing what's true, and basically seeing what's true either in noticing impermanence, noticing the unsatisfactory nature of of the impermanent life that is seeing how there's no lasting happiness and grasping is just a source of 
suffering and seeing the selflessness of the process. And particularly, Ajahn Damodaro's practice had to do with mindfulness of sensation. There's two different aspects of the, the two different styles of practice that I want to share with you that we can do together. And, um, and then I thought also, uh, since people are, uh, since these different teachers are sharing what worked for them, that I'd share, if there's some time, some uh, techniques, particularly around, uh, around meditation on the breath, that I would uh, share that things that have worked for me. We started doing a little bit last week when we did Uba Ken, and I had, I had uh, suggested different ways to refine the awareness on the breath. And I, I thought I'd continue doing a little bit of that as well tonight. So if there's, we'll see how it goes. Um, so here's one of his main practices. It involves moving the hand. Here it is. The practice of Vipassana, insight meditation, according to the fourfold path of mindfulness, begins by attending to the body within our body. This is best done by becoming mindful of the sensation in the center of the hand, between the wrist and the fingers, right here. And raising the hand and forearm in small three to six inch increments from horizontal to vertical and back down again. Fix the mental factor of mindfulness. You'll get to do it in a moment, don't worry. <laughs> Fix the mental factor of mindfulness to the subtle sensation that arises and ceases in the hand each time the hand moves. At first, it will feel just like raising the hand in the ordinary way. Later, when the factor of mindfulness is stronger in attending, sorry, in attending to the hand movement, there will arise a much clearer sensation than at first, often like a mild electric current. When the hand stops moving, this sensation will disappear. With increased practice and attention, insight will arise so that the meditator will see increasingly clearly how the sensation in the hand arises and ceases each time the hand moves. Further, mindfulness and concentration on this sensation will lead to seeing the sensation arise and cease throughout the body. This will lead to the experiencing of the heart base, which means the meditator will feel sensations arising and passing away in the area of his heart. At the same time, the sensations arise and vanish in the hand. After some further practice, the power of concentration and mindfulness will be strong enough to notice the arising and passing away of subtle sensations at the heart base simultaneously with any sensation noted in the body. Moment to moment awareness of sensation in hand movement or other body movement will come directly to attention at the heart base. So this is what he came up with sitting in his kuti alone and saying, no, those other practices don't really do it. But this enabled him to do it. It's like Mahasi Sayadaw, who we did many weeks ago, changing from feeling the, the, uh, the breath at the nostrils to discovering, gee, it's easier to feel it at the rising and falling of the abdomen. Let's do it that way. And a whole um, legacy of teachings where people feeling it at the rising and falling of the abdomen instead. Just somebody found, oh, this works. You might find that something else works. 
the key principle is mindfulness, attending to what's actually happening, because if you look carefully enough, you will see moment to moment how everything is arising and passing away. Now, you might, as when we do this, uh, be thinking as he says, oh, well, what's the point of this? Moving the hand, so big deal. But you have to realize that in the course of settling the the awareness and really collecting the mind, you start to see more and more subtle things that you don't, you wouldn't perhaps see right here this evening. Uh, like we were talking about last week, remember I, I, I talked about Ananda Maitreya who said, oh, just look at the thumb, keep on looking. That's what, that's my initial instruction, keep on looking at the thumb. And I said, yeah, and then what do you do? He said, oh, I just have people look at the thumb for quite some time until they see in, inside, the, until they directly feel inside the, that area all life moving in it and then they expand from the thumb to the whole body. So it's just amazing how many different ways there are to feel this changing nature of who we are. All right, given that, let's do this first practice, there's a second practice that Ajahn Damodaro uh, teaches as well. But let's just try this, okay? So put your hand in front of you. I would encourage you actually to close your eyes so that you can place all your attention on the movement. Okay. And once again, become mindful of the sensation in the center of the hand between the wrist and the fingers, right in the middle of the palm. Just feel that for a moment. Notice what happens when you put your attention there. Any kind of energies that you might feel, aliveness, vibration. And don't go straining to notice anything. Be very relaxed as you do it because sometimes if you try too hard, you, uh, you miss what's just simply right here. And now when you're ready, just very simply move, oh, somewhere three to six inches, one movement st steady from that horizontal to uh, say a 30 degree angle from that parallel to the floor and put all your attention on feeling the sensations. And then stop. As he says, fix the mindfulness to the subtle sensation that arises and ceases in the hand each time the hand moves. Once again, go another 30 degrees. Notice the sensations and then notice when you stop. You might notice other sensations when you stop. And then once again, Go from 60 degrees up to 90 degrees. Pay attention to any sensations you notice. And then when you stop, notice that. And now do the same on the way down. And for the next, oh, let's do this for about Three minutes, go at your own pace. I won't say anything. Just notice the sensations of the movement and what happens when you stop. Okay. 
Go at the pace that keeps your interest. The one thing to attend to if you become aware is a rising and passing of subtle sensations or any kind of sensations. One sensation after another. Or when the movement ends, passing of that.
saw a few people, a number of people, just after about a minute or two. It's, okay, this is enough, which is understandable. No, no judgment on that. But if you were sitting with him, you'd be doing that for a few hours. You know. Don't go to sleep with it. Yeah. Unless your your arm might fall asleep, but uh, yeah. so let's first check in. What, what was that like? Yeah, I experienced heat and warmth in the center of my palm, mm-hmm. and it changed according to if it was more horizontal to vertical. Mm-hmm. What else? Anything else that you notice? Yeah, back over there. Isabel. Isabella. Over there. Um, I was just very aware of my heart beating through my palm and the, the ebb and flow of the blood just passing through, and it just felt like a wave. Mm-hmm. And it was something that when I originally started, I thought, I'm not going to feel this. Mm-hmm. But it was really clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right next to you, right, just on the other side of you. Yeah. I felt like I had restless arm syndrome or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just wanted to shoot my arm out and just stretch it up and make it wind. It was just really, really hard for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Imagine going on a two-month retreat. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're up there. Go ahead. Why don't you yeah, just no, yell no, out? I was I, 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 the sensation came very quickly, and it was consistent no matter what the position was. So it was really on the top of my hand. Mm. Uh-huh. It was more here at the left of my hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else that hasn't been said? Yeah. Oh, this. Oops. I was somewhat uh, irritated with this practice, <laughs> and I found I've done many different types of meditations, and I said I don't need another one, and uh, I'm just going to do this and change the speed. It felt like a little bit like walking meditation when I first did that. I don't really want to walk, but I'll change up the pace to make it more interesting. So that's what I did. And and did you, how was it more interesting? Yeah, it was still irritating. <laughs> Did you notice the irritation as part of the meditation? That, that, that's, that's the thing to actually... He doesn't just stay with the hand movement. He opens up actually to noticing the pleasant, unpleasant, the, the Vedana, the, the second foundation of mindfulness, noticing your mind states, noticing all the different foundations of mindfulness. So if you would be doing that, just like in a Vipassana retreat at Spirit Rock, you say, God, I hate this, then, which is an understandable reaction sometimes, then you turn your attention to that feeling. Even while you're doing this, okay, notice your relationship to the experience. There's contraction, there's frustration, there's restlessness, and that becomes your subject of, of mindfulness. And holding that or noticing that without getting into the story but just seeing, oh, here is restlessness or frustration or whatever, that too, see it coming and going. Right. Yeah. Well, my experience was just the opposite of yours. I noticed my mind was really quite delighted. It was like, oh, goody, we have something to do. So my, it was like I was working, you know, my mind was working it. I was really focused and concentrated and like, we were going to get this right. <laughs> so it became a task. Uh-huh. Which was enjoyable for you or a challenge. Or <laughs> something to do. Something to do. A lot of times people just want something to do in meditation. Often we're so used to doing something Simply being is... Uh, well, I'm a real challenge. doing kind of person, mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. <laughs> suited me just fine. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Gidra. Well, I found that um, a letting go and just get 
going with the little subtle nuances and it became like a sensual experience. And then I was getting attached to that. And so I, I tried to just be aware of that. And I have a new fondness for the shape my hand takes. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> Beautiful. Over here. Well, I just had to say something after um, this woman's response. His also, I was bored. <laughs> just, and I'm one of the people who stopped doing it because I was so bored. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, you see your relationship to the experience. And just like with, uh, with Vipassana, with mindfulness of the breath, sometimes very, uh, very commonly people get bored out of their skull. Breath, all right, you know. Here it is, we just had one a moment ago, you know, who cares? And you go through all of the re- reactions and you see, oh, this is my relationship. This is just what's happening. And what I'm doing with it on top of it is how I usually get confused by my reaction. So very understandable, very common. Noticing the boredom becomes the, the meditation subject. Yeah. Well, I found that my left hand was um, sympathetic <laughs> or I really felt a strong feeling in my left hand when I wasn't doing anything, mm. just in response. Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> okay. Two more. Uh, right behind you, uh, Isabella. And then we'll Here, take... Uh, hold on. Hold on one second. It seemed like my, my focus was, okay, the center of the palm. I couldn't feel anything. It was empty. I could I could feel my hand around it, but I couldn't feel the palm. But the point I thought the point was, okay, let me stay focused and bring my mind back when it wasn't doesn't want to be focused. Just like breathing, okay, there goes my mind. Whoop, bring it back. Whoop, there it goes. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. And I think I thought that that's part of the practice that I'm working on been working on is don't let that mind wander. Bring it back. Mm-hmm. So bring it back to the breath or bring it back to the palm. It's the same difference. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I was mm-hmm. practicing was bring it back. Palm. Like you say, the words palm, mm-hmm. palm, mm-hmm. palm. Stay mm-hmm. on the palm. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, no, it's just another, well, I'm not criticizing here, but if I'm, th- okay, what am I feeling? What am I doing? Okay, that's mind food. This is mind food. Let's, this is great. Let's see what we're feeling and doing and acting and, and all these millions of adjectives except bring it back to just palm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that was great. Nice. So that, that's the, one of the first aspects of the meditation is when your mind wanders, you come bring it back. As it gets more settled on the experience, then you can um, notice the subtleties. But for many people... It's, it's all you can do. Okay, let's be here, planet Earth, alive, in a body, breathing. Oh, okay. And actually, this is kind of like walking meditation. When you're doing something, there's um, sometimes it's easier to find the connection to the present within movement than just uh, the subtle stillness of sitting here breathing. Yeah, and that's absolutely fine. Bring it back and then see in a more penetrating way when you're connected with it. Okay, one last one. It's amazing people's different responses, isn't it? I found it absolutely fascinating, and I was really amazed by that, because I looked at my neighbor and sort of went, oh, God, you know, rolling my eyes, but the sensations in my hand were so amazing. I mean, it was this, like, spinning and different, you know, different temperatures. I mean, yeah, a big change in temper, a big, big change in speed. But what amazed me, all of a sudden I realized how I was so engaged in it. And it was like, oh, I mean, I'd completely forgotten everything else. No thoughts came in or anything. So that was a big surprise for me. Yes. Uh, that's actually what happens when you're... The factor of investigation, one of the seven factors of enlightenment, when the factor of investigation is strong and you're simply interested, re- keenly interested in what's happening the mind isn't engaged in a whole lot of stuff. 
You're not wandering in fantasy. It's, oh, how interesting this is. And that also happens, say, if you're on retreat and you really kind of lock into the breath, what had been a boring object, you know, who gives a darn, can become the most fascinating thing in the world. I, I can remember vividly in the middle of a longer retreat being so fascinated. It was the first time that I ever had had this on, on a retreat where I was just there and it was like the thought came to me, who needs drugs? Why would anybody need a drug? This is, this is as good as it gets. You know? And it was the same breath you know, that a few, that a month or so before is like, you know, okay, I'll just hang in there with the breath. What changes is that focus of attention. Then life starts to reveal itself when you're quite connected with it. And it can, it can happen and come and be there and say, wow, this is groovy. And then maybe an hour later, it's like, you know, you're all over the map where you've crashed and, you know, oh, do I have to go back to meditating? It's all a function of the focus and concentration, which can come and go. One of his main um, uh, teachings, the key to concentration is continuity. This is something we say a lot on retreats, where he says, um, he says there's different kinds, he talks about the different kinds of concentration. There's concentration that comes from absorption on a subject. And there's also concentration that comes from moment to moment noticing this moment, being here for this moment, being here for this moment. Moment to moment concentration, we, we've talked about it from time to time before, is called kanika samadhi, where it's not one pointed on a laser-like into an object, but you're just noticing this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment, this moment. And when there's that continuity of awareness, there's a very deep concentration that completely engages the mind and is not, it's not engaged in thoughts. So this is, uh, I'll just read a line about, about, about what he says. Um, This mindfulness is to be further developed in all the postures. Practicing continuously throughout the day, the meditator may alternate postures. While in standing posture, he should be mindful of the sensation arising from the contact of the feet on the ground. Practicing walking meditation, make an effort to notice moment-to-moment -moment change of sensation at the sole of moving the foot. While meditating in a lying posture, mindfulness should be turned to the sensation of the place, the places where the body touches the mat. Can I do this? In, in all of these postures, mindfulness develops from, from a coarse, continuous sensation to the clearer perception of the arising and passing away of all sensations in each moment. Practice should be developed as continuously as possible in all postures, etc., etc. So, now we're going to go to the second practice, which Christopher, I remember Christopher talking about, this is when I think of Ajahn Damodaro, this is what I imagine. He said he was really big on standing meditation. And people would stand not one hour, two hours, three hours, three, four hours at a time, you'd be doing standing meditation. It's a very potent practice. It's great when you're feeling tired uh, until you get tired of standing. But um, it, it's, it's something that I really recommend for, for people if your mind is very scattered or you're feeling sleepy uh, or you're feeling contracted to do standing. By the way, if you think that four hours is, is a lot, and it is a lot, um, if you ever have the chance to go to 
uh, India and go to the, the Kumbh Mela's. I've, went to a, I've gone to a Kumbh Mela where they have all these sadhus and, and uh, holy people coming. They have what are called... Um, some of these uh, sadhus do ascetic practices and uh, standing is an ascetic practice where you literally you stand. That's your practice. You don't sit down. And uh, actually, I think there was a, a mo- there was a movie. Uh, what, what was it? Uh, 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 it, it was uh, on the Kumbh Mela, and it was it was exactly like I I saw there. I went to Kumbh Mela in 1977, and I, there was one standing Baba who'd been standing for oh, I think he was standing for about um, eight or ten years or so. And he looked like he was kind of hanging in there, and it wasn't so, wasn't so easy. Then, then there was another standing Baba, who was he had been standing for about uh, you know, I don't know, like 17 or 18 years, and he was kind of getting comfortable with it. And then there was one who had been who had been standing for like 25 years or so, the most serene expression. They they have they lean on a on a pole, so they're allowed to to lean. And they, they kind of have themselves, they fall asleep in a standing posture too. And you're just, they do some kind of strap with them. So we're going to do it now for about three minutes. I, I just want to prime you. <laughs> Unless you think three minutes of standing, just think of the standing Baba who's, you know, eight years, is, is, he's still kind of getting warmed up, all right? And Christopher, like I said, would stand for you know anywhere from three to four hours at, at a time. So let's try this. Very, very. Wait before you go. Uh, notice how you get from sitting to standing. Be mindful of how your body does that. All the things. Let it be a really curious exercise. What is involved from changing the posture. And do that at your own rate. Notice all the muscles, the bones. Notice the difference in energy and the various sensations. And then let your feet be approximately just shoulder width or whatever width feels more balanced to you. Let the knees be soft so that they're not locked and the energy can move through. And the, um, the breath open. You might have, have a sense of yourself standing tall, but at the same time relaxed so your shoulders can be very um, at ease. And notice, uh, if you can, distribute the weight evenly left to right, front to back. Find a place of centeredness where there's minimal movement simply balance. Now there's various ways to do standing meditation. Ajahn Damodaro suggests feeling the point of contact just like you did with the hand. Just noting the sensation, noticing the sensations at the soles of the foot. Let's do that for a little while. You might notice pulsings or pressure, a vibration. Don't try to create anything special. Just notice what's here.
of your experience is unchanging or subtle changes moment to moment. Whatever you notice is fine. You might notice slight shifts, subtle shifts in posture all by this by themselves. And now, if you'd like another way to use the standing, just so that it's part of your repertoire, is to notice whatever you notice, whether it's the soles of the feet, or you can be present mainly for the breath, just like in the sitting, know that your body is breathing, or you notice any particular sensations, just what's happening now, as in the sitting, but with a standing posture. See if you can find a balanced, relaxed, receptive, interested attitude. Not trying to make anything happen, just being for your experience here for your experience as it is. As he suggests, see if you can notice a rising and passing away of sensations or experience. Now, whenever you're ready, come back to a sitting and see if you can be mindful all the way from the first impulse to move till you finally come back to the sitting position. You can do that at your own rate. Okay, let's hear it. What was that like? (coughs) 
it made me nauseous. <laughs> I felt like part of a kelp forest, being with all of these slightly swaying um, members around me and kind of connected to some sort of current. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Great. Yes. Did you want to say? It made me nauseous. <laughs> How many people were nauseous? Anything that you observe? Yeah. Uh, here, why don't you do that? It was really weird. <laughs> I felt I couldn't get my feet to feel solid on the ground because my legs felt different, and I almost felt split down the middle, like one side was light and one side was dark. Mm-hmm. 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 So I had to really work at, at um, being balanced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. One way you can do it, by the way, is if there's a chair in front of you, you can just uh, put your hands very gently on the chair to keep your balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My mind felt like half itch will travel. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you couldn't stop the itch. Mm-hmm. But um, eventually, then I tried to I would try to line my spine up, align my spine up with different parts of my body, and then try to feel it in my feet and. Um, and then I started to feel sort of like a shock absorber, mm-hmm. you know, so I could feel it change, but mm-hmm. the itch had not stopped all night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just want to ask a quick question. Yeah. Uh, were we supposed to do this with our eyes closed? Um, you can't. I, that, I, that's what I did. I usually do it with eyes closed. Did everybody closed. close their eyes? Yeah. Okay, good. I did too, but yeah. I, you didn't say anything oh, about sorry. the eyes. Yeah, but yeah. And it's um, having, if you're uh, a little bit um, unbalanced or nauseous, opening your eyes definitely grounds you a bit. I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Gitra? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, it was remarkably peaceful for the first time in weeks. I felt quiet. Mm-hmm. It was it was. It was groovy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? You know, so many different possibilities. Yeah, Gidra. Uh, it is tricky on the slant. I have. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I've. Uh, it, it, the, what I really noticed was just a, a just so many little postural adjustments in my feet and in my uh, in, in my calves. Uh, but I have done it before, and I have found it very valuable in terms of um, sleepiness. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, those of you who had, didn't fare well, I, I suggest you try it on the flat. <laughs> and that, Nancy, the last one. Well, I was going to say basically the same thing, but I had found it true before, even on the flat. How many, how impossible it is to really stay still mm-hmm. when you're, when you're uh, standing. And I think that's probably the reason that it's pretty much impossible to go to sleep standing up. Mm-hmm. Because your body, if, if you have any awareness of anything going on, it, you realize just how you're not still. Yeah. You can't, or I can't, stand still. Everything's just <laughs> always adjusting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing, actually. Yeah. Very absorbing. It's a little harder also to fall asleep because you usually wake up on the way down. You know, but, uh, but, um, but what you're saying actually is, is one of the... One principle in the meditation, you know, it's to see change, changing experience within the stillness. If you're sitting still, the stiller you are, not that you're a bad meditator if you move, but when you're very still, that's when you see all the subtle levels of change. Of change in the mind, of course, one thing to another, or all these sensations in the body which we we don't notice at all because we're so busy in movement and the stillness brings that relief. It, uh, it, it highlights the, um, the reality of change. So. Yeah, uh, questions? Wait, 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 hold on a second. Say it again. 
Okay. Um, I hope this is, um, people find this interesting Put or whatever, it, but. Um, close to your mouth. Okay. Um, I saw a documentary on Haiti and just the poverty there, and especially about the housing that it can easily flood. And there's a, it's very common for people to spend, when the houses flood during the night, they just stay, they fall asleep standing up to stay above water. And there's, I don't know, I don't know any one Haitian that I can ask, but there's an actual Haitian, French, you know, the French word that is that verb of standing while sleeping. Mm. I don't know if anyone else has heard about that, but. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So that's sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's, um, let's close with a short loving kindness and uh, the encouragement to find your own practice way to be mindful. Next week we'll, we will do the, the last master, Ajahn Jumni, and, and I will share some of uh, some other practices uh, that I find helpful and uh, uh, wrap up the series. Okay, so just feel your heart center. Feel the aliveness there. Might breathe in and out of the heart. The energy. And send some kind thoughts to yourself. May I be happy. May I know peace inside. May I share my love well. May I see things clearly. And then extending this to all beings in all directions, may all beings have happiness in their lives. May all find peace. May all feel their love and share it well. May all see clearly, see their true nature. And may our coming together have a beneficial effect for all beings everywhere. May all beings be happy. Happy standing, <laughs> happy moving. <laughs>
Thank you for listening. To learn how you can support the teachers and Dharma Seed, please visit dharmaseed.org slash donate.